This is Lakeside to London. We're chatting with Craig Mottram, soon to be a four-time Olympian from the Deakin Athletic Club, who joined us now from Cologne. Craig, thanks for chatting with us. You've just gotten in from France where you had a bit of a hit out there over 1,500. Tell us how it went. Not very well, if I'm being honest, um, Mitch. But uh, look, it was not uh, not too long off the plan, so it was a bit of a, an icebreaker, and and I'm sure it's going to put me in good stead going forward. So it can only get better from here. So um, we now are just saying Cologne. Got another race coming up tomorrow, and then um, three or four weeks to go until I line up in London. So there's still plenty of, plenty of time, plenty of work to do, but a lot of improvement to make. I know you have just arrived in Cologne, so it might be difficult to sort of get a grasp of things now, but um, are you able to give us any sort of insight on, on what it's like being based there, particularly with so many members of the Australian team there already? Yeah, look, it's very good. I, I based here last year as a bit of a dummy run, so it's um, it hasn't changed, obviously. It's uh, it's familiar territory for me now, so I know the park quite uh, the good places to run and, and the places to do sessions and workouts and stuff, so it's uh, in terms of facilities... It's not quite good as Lakeside Stadium, not quite as good as what we have back in, in Melbourne, but it's um, it's pretty good and and it's um, it's close to a lot of the races. So you you know you're within an hour flight of most places in Europe, and you can get the train in for a little off to meet. So tomorrow I'll run a five k in Houston, and we'll just drive sixty seven minutes down the road to do that. So it's it's really convenient, and obviously with other Australians here and things like that, it's as, as close to being at home in a, in a comfortable environment as you can be. It, you know, on the other side of the world, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, good to hear you're uh, you're giving the Melbourne facilities a, a local a bit of a plug there. We uh, we like to look after our athletes, but um, but prior to that, uh, I understand you spent a bit of time in the US doing a little bit of training, their altitude training in particular, and um, obviously a lot's been made of uh, altitude training in Australia in recent years, particularly with the uh, the the groundswell of uh, of support and popularity of the Falls Creek. Uh, how do the two sort of environments compare? Um, they're, you know, they're similar in the fact that they're, they're at altitude, obviously, but in terms of the, the environment, the geographical um, location and the, and the sort of the surrounding things you get, it's like chalk and cheese. In, in Falls Creek, it's you know, a beautiful rolling under scenery. There's nice lakes. The trails are really nice. Uh, um, and it's, you know, it's quite a picturesque and, and beautiful place to run where flags up is in the middle of the desert. It's hot as hell. Um, the trails are very rocky and very sandy um, and there's not a lot to look at on a lot of the runs it's just very very bloody and dry and, and hard work but in saying all of that it's it's a very very good place to try and I've had some great results off it so you know sometimes you, you've got to put yourself in those environments that, that make things a little bit more challenging to get the best results and, and to get the big benefit uh, from it so just going to flag this year is my fifth time there so I'm, I'm familiar with that um, area and if you haven't sort of noticed already, the theme of, of preparing this year for me for the Olympics is to try to keep things as familiar as possible and, and relax as low and as low key as I can so that I'm as comfortable and and um, and steady in my frame of mind and whatever going over the next three or four weeks. So that up has been really good but all three things my favourite place in the world the train will always remain that way. So we sort of always can yeah, when we're in flag up I had a good group of guys with me and we're always comparing a lot of the runs to what we had in, in Falls Creek. We were trying to find a hill that we could do reps up, which was like going up Mount Mackay. We were trying to find pace runs that was like the same surface as going out the left aqueduct from, from Langford's Gap and things like that. So it's, um, Falls Creek is the, the, learning, the learning background or learning base for a lot of the train athletes in terms of altitude and, and, and training locations. So it's always going to be, for me and for a lot of the Australian athletes that travel internationally, the best place in the world to train. Uh, we've been trying or doing our best to keep an eye on results while you've been over there in the States and we saw that you got a few races out. Um, in particular, there was the uh, the race in Eugene, the, the Prefontaine Classic there, which has gained a bit of a status boost in recent years with its addition to the Diamond League uh, calendar. Um, they talk about the scene there in Eugene it being a real athletics town and it's something that in Melbourne we maybe don't really have quite a grasp on. Can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Oh, you can... Um the home of uh, track and field in the US. So it's, it's very, very popular. Um, just down the road um, in Portland, and, um, uh, Adidas and Nike head offices in the US. Uh, and a lot of the offices are the major sporting companies in the US. So it, it's, uh, it's a very popular place to do outdoor sporting activities. But Eugene is now known as 
backend US. Um, mainly because of the history with Steve Prefontaine, who grew up there and went to college there and and uh, set a lot of his records at Hayward Field, uh, where the meet is now run. So it's a, it's a fantastic place to train. They've got a lot of trail. One area that's called Pre Trail, which is a chip bark park, which um, which runs around Hayward Field and a uh, university or the college there. You get a lot of runners, uh, a very supportive runners of, of track and field that know everything about running. So when we go there and, and train, everybody, you know, familiar, everybody's happy, everybody knows who you are and, and is looking forward to seeing you run or, or glad to have seen you run and all that sort of stuff. So that was also a, a location that we saw the big Mazunga. So this year when we went back there, it was quite quite nice to go back there and run over some familiar territory again and, and see some of the areas and show some of the boys some of the young guys that have been travelling with me, uh, you know, the, the location that, that I've been to in the past and and, and replaced that quite well. Uh, we understand that you've worn out the last of your training party and he's currently recovering, uh, one Josh Papanikolaou, also known as J-Paps, but uh, you've had a bit of an entourage. Oh, you, oh, we've got vision, do we? Oh, wow, there he is, like spread-eagled and everything. Oh, we've, we've got a thumbs up. Very good on your Paps. Um how uh, how's it been having the uh, the entourage, so to speak, and uh, how has that enhanced the experience? Oh, it's been great. I mean, the boys uh, I've um, on list the, the guys that came with me. We had Ryan Jackson, who's Melbourne's best guy, um, one of the old guys that I trained with in Melbourne, though, and obviously you know him very well. Uh, he was over as a training partner in Master and and nutrition. Um, Lurkin Adams, who just recently won the Gulf Coast uh, Marathon. Uh, in good shape, so he was over as a training partner. Al Faila, um, organizer, coordinator, and driver extraordinaire. We had some some new misses on the other side of the road in America. Our, the, the side mirror on one of the higher cars is more grey and looks 15 years older. Um, and obviously, Pat. So, Pat is now with me still in, in Europe. He's going to continue to stay with me all the way through to the games and he's going to carry on after. Um, in Europe and, and see some of the sites. So to have guys that I tracked in Melbourne with me has made it a lot more relaxing and, and familiar and and, uh, and a lot of fun. So the, the boys are slowly but surely getting tired, and one by one there. I think Al's in pieces at the moment. He's back in Melbourne recovering. Liam's actually come off ag staff in really good shape and Jack is on his way home at the moment. So uh, the boys are in good shape. And uh, as we say, we've been keeping an eye on results. Uh, I think well, in my experience, uh, results at this time of the year when you're sort of building towards a peak uh, can only tell you so much. Uh, h- how do you see where you're at at the moment? Um, that's very friendly and optimistic and a nice, polite way of saying that I haven't done very well in my last few races, but you wouldn't be far from the truth in saying that. But I, I, as you say, there, there's still, um, you know, it's pretty early days and for me, um, obviously, Prefontaine wasn't fantastic. New York, okay, I ran a 1500 there, 340, which was not too bad. But then, you know, history over the last six months showed that, you know, I could turn that around pretty pretty quickly. I ran 340 in Sydney before the trials, two weeks before the trials in Melbourne, then came out and ran well over 5K there. So, running 1500, running a 5K, two, two totally different events. So, for me, the 1500s at the moment are just training towards running a good 5K. So, I ran in Reims um, two days ago, uh, 1,500, not very good, but same thing, straight off the plane, it's a blowout, it's a, it's a sort of way to get the legs going before running 5K, which I'll do tomorrow. So hopefully tomorrow goes a lot better. Uh, um, I won't make any predictions. We'll just settle in early the first half of the race, try and try and stay relaxed and and then move through the field one at a time and and uh, and try and post a solid time. We're not looking to set the world on fire, post a solid time so that it, in 10 days from now when I line up in London the Crystal Palace for another 5k I can really have a stab and try to run fast and, and then uh, get a lot of confidence from that going forward into London So you've got the race tomorrow and then Crystal Palace as you say at the uh, the London Diamond League meet what's the plan between there and uh, and the games themselves? Well, well between the race tomorrow and Crystal Palace we'll come back here to Cologne um, for 6 days stay here and then travel into London the day before the race and then post the league, which is on Friday the 13th of July, um, I'll head to Tunbridge, which is the where the Australian team is going to place itself prior to the Olympic game. Uh, and I'll stay there for the three weeks between the Diamond League and the 8th of August, which is my first round of the 5K. So I've got a good block 
uh, of time between the Diamond League on the 13th and, and my first round on the 8th. So that'll allow uh, um, Josh and I to get good training done. Chris Wardlaw, my coach, she's going to come over and, and spend that time um, with us or with me in, in Tombridge. So that'll work with well. And we might look for another little 1,500 in, um, in late July just to sharp things up a little bit and, and bring me forward for final preparation. Well, it sounds like you've got it nicely planned out. All the best for the coming weeks, Craig, and thanks very much for chatting with us. Uh, Stay tuned to Lakeside to London. Plenty more interviews to come, which we'll be announcing via Twitter, at Atvic, and using the hashtag L2L. And if you've got any questions that you want us to throw our athletes, just use that same hashtag to throw it to us. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for plenty more Lakeside to London. (laughs) 